Hey y'all, it's Jacqueline at Pixie Dust PhD. I am filming this on June 13th, 2024. This is the month 52 creator update. We'll touch on some high level Disney parks news, but we're going to spend more of the chatting time talking about speculation about the Polynesian Tower. And then of course we will do stats and revenue both for month 52 and lifetime of the channel. I recently was away for about two weeks on a vacation and coming back and catching up has been a bit rough. I hope to have this monthly creator update posted by Sunday, June 16th, but if it is about a week later or so, I apologize for that, and it's possible some of the speculation will be out of date by then, but you know, in real time, it's June 13th when I'm filming, and let's have some fun. We'll just do a couple of brief Walt Disney World news items. The revamped Country Bear Jamboree is set to open in the Magic Kingdom on July 17th. An animation courtyard in Disney's Hollywood Studios theme park is going to receive a Little Mermaid theatrical production to debut later this fall. We did not get an exact date. Of course, much of the hype and discussion recently has been around Tiana's Bayou Adventure. As I've shared previously, I try to stay primarily spoiler-free, so I haven't watched the official point of view video. I haven't watched any really like media coverage. I don't really have an opinion or much to say on this, basically because I'm purposefully trying not to consume the content. As with all things Disney, there are big, big feelings. Some people are loving it. Some people are hating it. Some people are saying that the story is not very strong. Some people don't love the new animatronics. Some people think they're the best thing in the world. You're always entitled to your opinion. But I will say though, even though I don't really have an opinion yet, uh, regardless of how you feel about the ride or its elements, Tiana's Bayou Adventure opening back up, which is slated to open the end of June for everybody, right now it's in previews, but it will be fully open in a couple of weeks, is good for everyone, at the very least in the sense that it will eat crowds. So even if you don't like the ride or the retheme, it should help move guests over to there into waiting in that queue, which means that they will not be in other parts of the park. So yay, we love a crowd eater. And in Disney Cruise Line news, we have gotten our first look at Disney's Lookout Key at Lighthouse Point in the Bahamas. It seems like they definitely have a few operational issues to work through, and I fully suspect that with time, they will make improvements. But reviews of the beach itself have been great, so if you are a fan of DCL, it looks like this might be a fun stop for you. All right, moving on to Disney Vacation Club news. If you didn't already know, the DVC member lounge in Epcot above the Imagination Pavilion is currently closed, and it will be through mid-July. If you're headed down there soon, the temporary spot is sort of over by the Mexico Pavilion. And we just got the official announcement that a new DVC lounge in the Magic Kingdom will be in Frontierland, and it will replace the existing shooting arcade. That will be going under construction this year, opening date TBD. In other DVC items of interest, DVCnews.com did report that the Bay Lake Tower refurbishment is set to begin September of 2024, and it will last about a year. If you're heading down to Walt Disney World between September 2024 and September 2025 or so and want to stay at Bay Lake Tower, do note that there will be construction, so that may negatively impact your experience and maybe think about staying somewhere else. If you're going to be in the parks most of the days, though, it probably won't matter too much, but if you go back to your room to nap, if you have littles, anything like that, just think about how much this would impact your enjoyment of Bay Lake Tower. This will be a hard goods refurbishment, so I'm really excited to see what the rooms look like after this is done. Maybe I'll need to plan something like an October or November 2025 trip with a Bay Lake Tower stay just to go see my refreshed home resort. All right, and of course, the biggest Disney Vacation Club news recently has been about Island Tower at Disney's Polynesian Villas and Bungalows. There's been a couple of videos on the channel recently covering the hard facts. So we had the introducing Island Tower at PV video, as well as a more recent video that confirmed the slated opening date. I will leave links to those in the description below if you want to check them out. Here, though, let's talk more speculatively. Folks are able to make cash reservations for Island Tower right now. And due to cash reservations then being open, we do know that there will be three view categories. There's theme park view, preferred view, and standard view, and to me, that is a fact at this point. Of course, it will be 100% confirmed when point charts come out, but they're not going to change the view categories. Now, what differentiates or delineates these view categories is still very speculative and up in the air at this point. We also don't know the spread of rooms across the view categories. The folks at dvcnews.com speculated that they think preferred view will be a golf course or a pool view, and I tend to agree. Similarly, they said that a standard view would be lower levels on the back side of the building, so you're mostly going to be looking at parking lot, and that makes perfect sense to me. Theme park view should be very obvious. You should have a great direct theme park view. Preferred view will be a really interesting gamble. To me, the closest thing to compare would be probably lake view at Bay Lake Tower. Lake view at Bay Lake Tower is such a toss-up. You can be on a very low floor, a very high floor. You can be looking at Seven Seas Lagoon more. You can be looking more at Bay Lake. You can get a partial theme park view. It's really like, who knows? I also think preferred view at the Island Tower could be very like, who knows? Maybe you get a room that is golf course, but also a partial parking lot. Maybe you get a room that's pool view, but also partial just like greenery and trees and shrubs or whatever. But presumably there will be some preferred view rooms that will have partial theme park views, which would be awesome. But then it does become that gamble of, do you 
pay more to get the preferred room over a standard room to maybe get a theme park view. And then it turns out when you check in, perhaps you're on floor four of the backside of the building and you can kind of see the golf course. <laughs> Again, that's all super speculative. We really don't have any hard and firm facts on this. I am just imagining what it might be. For me personally, I don't really like the gamble. I feel like if I paid more points and ended up with like a golf course view, I would not be happy. And I try to not set myself up to not be happy. So I would probably pay the cheapest rate and say in a standard room, or if I wanted to ball out, then you book the theme park room. And again, we don't have the points chart. We don't have a lot of officially confirmed details, but people are definitely making some pretty solid speculative guesses that in my opinion are fairly well informed. For example, dvcnews.com reported out on speculation about the number of rooms based on an analysis done by the DVC market folks. They were able to look very thoroughly at construction photos and estimated that there would be 34 duo studios, 97 deluxe studios, 24 dedicated one bedrooms, 17 dedicated two bedrooms, 46 lock off two bedrooms, and four of those penthouse two bedrooms. They also noted that those penthouse two bedrooms are flanked on other side by deluxe studios on the lagoon side and duo studios on the monorail side. Again, this is all speculative for sure. It's not confirmed, but it is a pretty well-informed guess. So take that with a grain of salt, but it's interesting to think about. And price per point debut looks like it might be at $235. Props to a commenter on my last Polly Island Tower update video who noticed this fine print in a Disney Parks video. It's that standard timeshare language, but it does note $23,500. If you assume the mint buy-in is still 100 points, that would put you at $235 per point. And I apologize for not naming you, but YouTube switched at some point to showing me your handle. And so for most of you, that's a fun username, but not anything that is probably your actual name. So unless I knew you from before, I just don't know your name, but feel free to leave your name in the comments down below if you want. I think Greg also guessed $235 per point. I don't know if that was just a guess guess or informed the same way that this was from the timeshare language at the end of the Disney Parks video. I kind of always figured it would be between 230 and 245 per point. Of course, selfishly, I would rather be more like 230 to 232, but 235 is not that bad. And personally, I would expect to see all the actively selling resorts race to that number. We'll set aside bills at Disneyland Hotel for a second. But so the cabins at Fort Wilderness, Alani, Riviera, and then Polly would all go up to 235 is my expectation. I think if we see a bump for those, we would also then see a bump for Bills at Disneyland Hotel. And my guess is that DVC is going to maintain that spread where Bills at Disneyland Hotel just is priced higher than the other ones. From a business strategy perspective, there's a lot to be said at keeping everything you're actively selling at the same price because then it's not like one is more valuable than the other. At the same time, there just is such high demand for Disneyland and such low inventory. It's like a whole other world out there. So I don't blame them for being like, hey, we could make more money off this. Let's make more money off this. It makes sense. <laughs> That's all the Polly Island Tower speculation I have for now. Let me know your conspiracy theories in the comments down below. When do you think it's going to go on sale? That's a big one I keep getting asked and I, you know, who knows? They can do whatever they want. <laughs> and as always, if there is other Disney or theme park news that I missed that you want to chat about, leave a comment down below. Happy to have that dialogue. I will note that for a few months now, if I reply to you and then you reply to me in the same thread, I used to get an email that would tell me that. And now that's not happening, even though I didn't change any of my YouTube settings, which is super frustrating. So if there's ever anything you really want me to see, just leave a fresh comment because I always get those to my email. It's just the replies sometimes are getting lost. And so I apologize if uh, we've been having a conversation and then it just dies off because of me. <laughs> anyway, let's get into stats for this month. I pulled these from May 11th through June 10th. We posted at nine proper videos this month, which is quite a lot for me personally. As I mentioned before, if we are doing vlog type content, especially if it's shorter, I have been trying to post twice a week. I think I've stayed relatively true to that. And luckily for me, Disney decided to drop that most recent Island Tower, the Polynesian update on a day where I had just basically come back from vacation. So I'd purposely taken that day off. So I already had that day off work, which meant I could pump the video out same day. Do not expect that in the future. I work really long days and I mostly am working. <laughs> Here is a look at the top content posted this month by views. Unsurprisingly, of course, the Island Tower news videos are really carrying the channel. Interestingly, there is a very big spread. Granted, I guess one was posted at the very top of this monthly period. So literally May 11th was the first day of the monthly period, but I got 5,000 views. And the more recent videos had about a week to rack up views and it's sitting under a thousand. But overall, this is not a bad top 10 at all. And interestingly, but probably unsurprising, at least to me at this point, only three of these videos were posted this month. Most of the vlog content does not rack up very many views. I know that's going to be the case when I post them, but for me, it's a way to archive my trip and my memories. And some of you like it and I appreciate that you do. Some of you don't care for that content. I can also totally understand that. I kind of post the vlogs for me 
And so I know they do poorly stats-wise. But yeah, funnily enough, the top three videos are all Polynesian-themed. The top two, of course, are covering the recent news, but then the third one is a room tour because during our October trip, we actually did stay at the Polynesian. Overall, this month, the channel got just over 13,000 total views from just over 9,000 unique viewers. And while that's not a record high, it's probably top five or so, and definitely a huge improvement over the past, I don't know, half of a year. And of those 9,000 unique viewers, over 1,800 of you were returning, and this is an all-time huge record for the channel. Thank you so much to everyone who interacts with the channel, liking the video, subscribing, leaving a comment down below, sharing with friends, all that helps so much. And big thank you to Judy and Ben who supported me this past month over on Ko-fi. I really, truly appreciate it. In month 52, the channel amassed just under 930 total watch hours. This is also an all-time record. And we got over 182,000 impressions, again, a record for the channel. This is a little surprising to me because this wasn't generated from having shorts that went viral. I posted no shorts this month. I did get some views from shorts, like some of the old shorts still get views and such, but this really was driven by the video content. I think probably from the Island Tower news, of course, but still super exciting. And 57% of my impressions came from YouTube this month. Also, again, an all-time high. And for the record to fit these charts in one page without the bars being super tiny, I have been deleting months here and there. So when I say it's an all-time high, I did go back to my spreadsheets and look at literally every month, not just the bars represented on this graph. So it really is an all-time high. And all that channel activity led to 61 new subscribers this month. Not an all-time high, but a very good month. For lifetime analytics, the channel now has just over 320,000 views and just under 21,000 watch hours. In total, we have 3.42 million impressions, with 39.7 of those coming from YouTube. And overall, we are at 1,759 subscribers. So obviously, this was a very strong month, not even just compared to last month. It was a very strong month for the channel. And like I said, being able to pull these numbers from videos only and not from a short randomly doing really well is amazing. I'm so grateful to everyone who's tuned in. I really do appreciate it. Though, of course, it does kind of feel like my success on the channel depends on when DVC drops news about new developments, which is obviously not something I can control and is not going to happen on a monthly cadence. But, uh, you know, I'll take the rewards when they come. The only stat that was worse this month, and it was much worse compared to last month, was the percent watch time from those not subscribed. But, of course, I expect that to be the case if I'm reaching such a much wider audience than usual. I wish those folks would subscribe. I wish that they would see the content and find it quality and helpful and useful or entertaining and informative and subscribe, but that typically is not the case. And obviously I'm very happy about the lifetime stats. We're almost at 21,000 watch hours already when last month we had just hit 20,000. So that's wild. I mean, it was one month with over 900 watch hours. It's not something I ever, ever would have predicted. That's like two months worth of time usually. So I'm looking forward to hitting the 21,000 watch hour milestone lifetime next month. And maybe if I'm very lucky, we'll hit 1,800 subscribers. I am not holding my breath for that. But again, 61 subscribers this month, putting us over 1750 lifetime. Very exciting. For revenue, it was estimated that in month 52, I made almost $110. That's about eight and a half dollars for every thousand views or just about $23 for every thousand ad views. And you can see that was definitely driven by the original sort of introducing Island Tower at PVV video, which brought in way, way more ad revenue than any other video this month. But even if you take that video out of these stats and I'm down $41, that still puts me at about almost $70 on the month, which for me is good. I'm not too sure what's happened since 2024. I don't feel like my channel has exploded by any means. Maybe the ad algorithm or like revenue calculations has changed on the YouTube side, but I do feel like revenue has been going better recently. Lifetime, it is estimated I've now made just over $1,000. That's about $3 for every thousand views or about $19 for every thousand ad views. Very fun to eclipse $1,000 made off of YouTube. Again, you pay taxes on that. And again, like I've spent more money on the channel than that. It's a hobby, so that's fine. I, I knew I would spend money doing this, but um, it's still fun. It's a fun accomplishment, but don't think that's like, ooh, pure $1,000. It's also been how long now since I've been monetized? <laughs> over a year, over a year and a half, probably. It's been a while. <laughs> it's a slow trickle. And here you can see the past six months estimated revenue. Definitely May was different and unexpected in all of the best kinds of ways. For upcoming content, we already posted the Epcot vlog. That'll be the first video that counts in this monthly period. And then basically it's going to be vlog content unless there is DVC news that drops that I have the time, energy, bandwidth to make a video. 
And I, I think I always would make a video. It just might not come out right away. It might be a four day delay for all I know. For sure, I will show you our Tiffin's dinner and my brief review of that. Had a lovely time. And then also I did film the Adventure Friends Cavalcade and I'm excited to put that on the channel. Again, it's not like the highest quality video in the world, but it's me preserving my memories and I can always go back and watch it. And I think it's funny when you go online and see people making fun of folks who take pictures or film events and then they're like, when are you ever going to go back and look at it? And I'm like, I actually go back and look at mine kind of often because it's like fun and heartwarming. We did also eat breakfast at Alan Compass for the first time this trip, and I for sure will show you a video on that. Everything else is like, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. Basically, I haven't edited any of those videos yet, so like could change it up. After our Alan Compass breakfast, we were not going to a park until much later that day, so we did go to Riviera just to kind of like vibe and hang out. Um, mostly my partner had some work calls that they had to take, and I was like, well, I'll hang out at Riviera, whatever. Um, so I'm not sure if I have enough footage to make a video of that, but we'll see. And we did go to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. I probably will have a video from that. I know it's so late and irrelevant, but again, it's preserving my memories and sharing my fun times with you. I know some of you like it, even though most of you don't care. And that's that's not a dig at you. I understand why you don't care. We also did a monorail crawl. I have not reviewed the footage from that, so we'll see if I have enough to make a video. I hope I do. It was a really fun night. And then, yeah, there will be just more sort of restaurant and vlog stuff upcoming. Maybe, maybe if I have time and bandwidth, I'm interested in making another DVC availability video. I know that those are valuable for a lot of people, but also we're coming up on a time where seven months from soon, it would be like MLK day territory, which is mid to late January in the States. So I know that's a popular time for folks. And then also 11 months from that same time frame should be like mid May, which for some people is like graduation season and the start of their summer. I don't often really talk about 11 month availability because for the most part, it's fine. But I have had a couple requests come in recently to look at 11 month more seriously. So I might try to sneak that in there. It's just hard because with so many resorts and so many room types, like even just a brief seven month availability video ends up being like 40 to 55 minutes. And then if you add 11 months for every resort and every room type, it gets a little <laughs> overwhelming, honestly, but we'll see. Again, this is super depending on my bandwidth and time and availability. I did also want to note that when I go on vacation to not Disney, I do still tend to take footage. It ends up usually being more pictures than video, but I do still document my vacations. Recently, we got back from a Norwegian fjord cruise and it was so magical. And so I hope to maybe put some time into my second channel, which is called trying to have a life. So I did post the princess cruise drinks guide basically that I had available to me. Uh, that was one of the big questions when I was researching the trip is how much do drinks cost? So I, I turned that one around real fast because they could change those prices at any time. And I figured I would try to throw a bone to people who were also planners and wanted to know, but I hope to just post other stuff about the trip. But I've also said that about when we went to France and Italy and it never really happened. But anyway, I want to try to consciously put more time into my second channel that one I'm never expecting to get monetized. That one really is just for me and being able to share with my friends and such. Like, here, look at our ridiculous vacation. But that all being said, if I do put more time into the second channel, it means less time into this channel. And so even if I'm only posting vlogs that are only a few minutes long, it might end up just being one a week instead of two, like we've been doing, because I'll then be putting that effort into the second channel. And so if you're interested in seeing non-Disney stuff vlog content, you can go ahead and go over there. But I do not post to that second channel with any amount of regularity. Um, I don't pay a ton of attention to it, honestly. And I am starting to think that that is a folly for me personally, not for growth on YouTube, not for having a side hustle or whatever, just for like, I have all this great footage and pictures of these wonderful places I've been. And if I just spent the time to collage things together, then I could have a video forever. All that to say, if you see me less around here, you can always check me out over there, but also it's my partner's birthday very soon. And then it's my birthday. So we're in birthday month territory. So we tend to do a lot more social things, which means I just have less time for stuff like this. I feel like for over a year now, the end of all these videos is me trying to say I might disappear, but I'm fine. And I'm sorry if I do. <laughs> and um, my job has just been really intense. And it's hard for me to predict what my time will be like and my stress and demands and such. But I do genuinely like doing this. I love connecting with you all, especially in this monthly creator update format. It's just so real for not being a live stream, I guess it's as real as it can get anyway. Or I mean, actually for not meeting up with you to get a coffee or a drink, it's as real as it can get anyway. But yeah, so preemptively again, sorry if I disappear or if you see me around less, maybe check me out on my other channel. If you really want my sort of daily chaos thoughts, Twitter is the best place for that for sure. And I am trying to post more on Kofi just because it's not nearly as time intensive as doing this. And I still think it is valuable. I hope the start to your summer has been kind and fun. It is now officially like 90 degrees, feels like worse where I live. Um, so we 
left for vacation. It was still like nice spring here. And then it was colder where we went, you know, it was like mid fifties to mid sixties, which is totally fine with me. Came back sweltering. <laughs> Stay hydrated, wear your sunscreen. If you are in the Southern hemisphere, happy winter. Sending all of my best summer vibes to you. I hope you're staying safe, happy, and well, and we'll see you real soon at Pixie Dust PhD.